There is a third, which makes it not a little difficult. The quality, quantity, and intricacy of the matter here to be confined to such a compend. All which, together considered, do infer a fourth difficulty that hardly can it get a pass through the press, which is blocked up against all such books that may offer a manifestation of the innocency of that people, and the injustice and inhumanity of their enemies, which is their only hope of preventing the world's knowledge and condemnation of their actions. Yea, there is a fifth that wants not its own difficulty, that though the press were patent, yet an empty purse from a poor impoverished people will as readily preclude all access to it as if it were locked up by law, but both together make it hard. But there is a sixth disadvantage, yet more discouraging, that the man as well as the money is wanting to manage, wanting to manage excuse me, the business, and this needs no other proof than the necessity of my poor pen to undertake it instead of a better. It must needs be very low with the people that stand in such need of a pitiful patrocony as mine is. Our persecuted brethren elsewhere have this advantage of us, that they have champions to espouse their quarrel, which we have not, but only such who, as they are reputed in the world, so in their own sense, own themselves to be very unaccomplished for such work, and under this invincible disadvantage also, that, being forced to a wandering and unsettled life, they have no conveniency, nor can be accommodated with time, nor helps to perform it, and so circumstantiated that either it must be done at this time, and in this manner, or not at all. In the seventh place, we are at a greater loss than any suffering people, in that, among all other bitter ingredients, we have this gall also in our cup, that they that suffer most among us have not the comfort and benefit of the sympathy of others that sufferers used to have from good people. The reason of this makes an eighth discouragement, besides what is said above, that not only is the case and cause of that poor, persecuted, and wasted witnessing remnant obscure in itself, and not known to the world, nay, not so much as in the very neighboring churches of England and Ireland, but also more obscured by the malice of enemies, traducing, calumniating, and reproaching that righteous remnant whom they intend to ruin, not indeed as heretics, which is the case of other suffering churches, wherein they have the advantage of us also, that though the name be more odious, yet it makes the notion of their cause and the nature of their enemies nurture, and is more effectual to conciliate sympathy from all that know that Protestants are persecuted by Papists under the notion of heretics. But we are at a loss in this, that our persecutors, at least the most part of the executioners of the persecution, will not as yet avouch that Presbyterian, excuse me, avouch that Protestantism is heresy, though we want not this nickname, likewise from the chief of them that are professed papists. But as schismatics, seditious, rebels, traitors, murderers, holding principles inconsistent with government, to wit their tyranny, and the peace of human society, to wit their association against religion and liberty, and therefore to be exterminated out of the world. And this imposture, covering all their mischiefs, hath prevailed so far with the blinded world, that under this brand the consideration of their cause and case is buried without farther inquiry. This were yet more tolerable from open enemies, if there were not another more pressing discouragement in the ninth place, peculiar to them in Scotland, that having to do with treacherous as well as truculent enemies, as they have been much destroyed by open force, so much more by fraud. While by ensnaring favors, some have been flattered from the testimony, others disdaining and suspecting, as well as deprived of and secluded from these favors, have stuck to it. Hence defection brought on division and division confusion, which hath reduced the Reformation to a ruinous heap. In the next place, as the consequent of the former, while the pure remnant have been resolutely prosecuting the testimony, and not only keeping themselves free of, and standing at the farthest distance from, all degrees of compliance, but also witnessing against their brethren involved in them, and thinking it their duty to discountenance them in these corruptions and backslidings. They have been therefore reproached and misrepresented very industriously as, quote, ignorant, imprudent, transported with blind zeal, extravagant, wild separatists, espousing new and nice notions, rejectors of the ministry, imposers on the ministry, deniers of all government, usurpers of an imaginary government of their own, that died as fools and as guilty of their own blood, unquote. 
by which odious and invidious obloquies they have easily prevailed with many both at home and abroad, that are more credulous than considerate to believe these things of them. Hence, with a prejudicate people, a contrary representation will find difficult acceptance. However, this, moreover, is another great disadvantage, and renders an essay to vindicate their sufferings very uneasy, that they are thrust at and tossed on both hands by enemies and professed friends, and by enemies that are not papists but professed Protestants, owning the same fundamentals in opinion, though in practice not holding the same head, and by friends that not only are Protestants but Presbyterians under the bonds of the same solemn and sacred covenants, the obligation whereof they still own, and cannot only so, but much, excuse me, but such, whose piety and godliness cannot be doubted. This is a gravamen grievous to bear, and greatly aggravates the difficulty. Finally, the greatest of all is that not only their cause is rendered odious, but must be confessed truly stated as heads of suffering. For now, it is the dragon's chief stratagem with us, like to be the most subtle, ensnaring, and successful of any, that ever he set on work since he began his this war with the Lamb, which yet I hope will prove as fatal to his interest as the former, to bring the sufferings of Christ's witnesses to such a state that may seem to spectators little or nothing relative to religion, that so he may destroy both them and their testimony unlamented, and by that trick divert others from concerting that same necessary witness in the season thereof. And for this end, he will change both matter and manner in managing the war. He will not now persecute for the old controverted heads of popery with fire and faggot as formerly for refusing to worship Our Lady or the, quote, blessed sacrament of the altar, unquote. These weapons and engines are so worn out of use that they will not work now as they did before. And that old bawd of Babylon has become so ugly and out of date that he does not believe her beauty can be so bewitching except she put on a new busk. But her eldest daughter, the prolatical church, of the same complexion with herself, except that she is colored with Protestant paint, is fitter for his service to allure our land into fornication, and who will not be enticed, must be forced to communion with her. By signings, confinings, exactions, extortions, and impositions of oaths, etc. Religion must be little concerned here, for there is preaching enough and of a Protestant doctrine too, and without the monkey tricks and matinee bank shows and sopperies of English popish ceremonies and liturgical services. What would they be at? Is it not better to yield to this than to fall into the hand of the Scottish-Spanish Inquisition that will all rack the purse and body and conscience and all? This is one complex head of suffering, and thought a very small one by many, but now, finding this would not do his business yet, it looked too like religion still. He hath therefore invented a new machine. He will not now persecute, nor force the conscience at all, so good-natured is the devil and his lieutenant grown in their old age, for matters of mere religion, nay, if we may believe him, who, when he speaketh a lie, speaketh it of his own, hath uh, he hath not done it this long time, but only in all the violent courses exercised against these sufferers. He hath been magistrat magistratically chastising the disobedience and rebellion of a few turbulent traitors who would not own the government. And thus, under the notion of rebellion and disowning authority, he hath had access and success to destroy almost an innumerable number of honest and innocent, faithful and fruitful lovers of Christ, who, though indeed they have had their suffering stated upon those points, yet I doubt not shall be found among the followers of the Lamb, and confessed and confessors and martyrs of Christ, who have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, not loving their lives unto death, whose blood is crying for vengeance against the shedders thereof, and he will make inquisition for it when he comes to overturn, overturn and take his own right, for which they have been contending. Nevertheless, there is a prejudice too prevalent with many to misregard the case and cause of these contenders, or anything that can be said to represent them favorably, and all these disadvantages, difficulties, and discouragements together considered would soon cool my courage, and at first blush make me leave off before I begin, were I not persuaded that it is the cause of Christ these reproached people are still suffering for, and that their great sufferings and reproaches are both alike unjust. 
from both which the Lord will vindicate them and bring forth their righteousness as the light and their judgment as the noonday in his own time. In confidence of which, depending on his conduct, I shall undertake, as briefly as possible for me, to represent their case and clear the cause so far at least as concerns their contest with their persecuting enemies, with whom I only deal at present, it not being my purpose to descend particularly in their necessitated contendings with complying brethren, partly because they would make the volume to excrescence unto too great a bulk, and because they are to be seen elsewhere. Yet, in effect, these also are not only here narratively deduced, but whatever is odious in them is vindicated, and what is difficult in some measure inundated. But it may be expected and de-siderated that I should give a distinct deduction of all the steps of this woeful defection against which a great part of the testimony hath been stated. But I would have the reader advertised, I touch only that part of the testimony which hath been sealed by severe sufferings from enemies. It were a talk, it were a task, excuse me, transcending my capability and a theme wherein I have no pleasure, besides that it is inconsistent with my leisure to enlarge upon such a sad and, sa and shameful subject, though the world indeed is at a loss, that they that would do it cannot, and they that would and should do it will not. And it is a greater loss, not only to Scotland, but also to the whole Christian world, that what hath been done in this kind already cannot see the light, or rather that the Church of Christ is deprived of its light, which, through the injury of the times and the disingenuous prudence of some, who suffer themselves to be imposed upon by the patrons of defection, is embezzled and suppressed. I mean that excellent and faithful history of defection, the posthumous work of the famous Mr. McWard, whose praise is in the churches, which, if they that have it in keeping, would do themselves the honor and the world the happiness of publishing it, there would be no more need to discover from whence, to what, and how that church hath fallen and degenerated, nor so great difficulty in that indisputable and indispensable duty that such a day calls for, in searching and trying our ways, to the end we may turn again to the Lord, nor any necessity for my poor essay to invite and incite the people of the Lord to take cognizance and compassion on poor, perishing Scotland. I wish that they who have it may consult more their own duty and credit and what they owe to the memory of the dead, the church's edification, the day's testimony, and the honor of Christ than to continuously rob the world of such a treasure which I, which I doubt not to call treason against Christ and sacrilege against the church and stick not to tell them if they will not publish it. The world must know there was such a thing done. But it not being my design now to detect or reflect upon all the defections of that declining, and by declensions divided, and by divisions among only not destroyed church, and by divisions almost, excuse me, only not destroyed the church, I shall meddle with them no further than what is necessary to clear the cause, referring the knowledge and account of them either to the notoriety of the grossest of them, or to the more particular aneration of them, to be found in papers emitted and published by the contenders against them, of which one is this same year's edition entitled, quote, The Informatory Vindication of a Poor, Wasted, Misrepresented Remnant, unquote, etc., in which may be evident that notwithstanding of all this darkness and distress, defection and division, under which the Church of Scotland hath been so long, and is still laboring, there is yet a poor, wasted, wounded, rent, and almost ruined, but still wrestling and witnessing remnant of professors and confessors of Christ there, who, though they have not only had their souls exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud, but their bodies also killed all the day long, and counted as sheep for the slaughter, have yet through grace endeavored to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and have not loved their lives dear unto the death, and have continued to this day contending both against the professed enemies and also declining friends, sustaining from both the utmost of rage and repro reproach. And since that little book gives an account what their contendings have been against their backdrawing brethren on the right hand and the left, I shall spare labor to offer a discussion of them, only endeavor to make it difficult excuse me, only endeavor to make it not difficult to decide and determine on whose side truth lies, but what is here hinted. I shall conclude with advertising the reader of one thing further, that, 
As this reproached people, for testimony I am pleading, is now the only party that is persecuted in Scotland, some few accepted who are exempted from the pretended favor of the current indemnities, and their persecution still continues, notwithstanding of the impudent as well as ensnaring de declarations of universal liberty to all dissenters, which they look upon as their honor and happiness, to be thought incapable of tyrannical and anti-Christian favors, so their past and present oppressions and sufferings are only here in general aggregated, described as to their kinds and vindicated as to their causes, the particular deduction of their number, weight, and measure by their names that have been martyred and murdered, both by formality of law and without all formality of law, by sea and land, city and country, on the scaffolds and in the fields, of the manner of their sufferings and on the form of their trials and testimonies, being intended shortly, if the Lord will, to be admitted and published in a book by itself, which will discover to the world as rare instances of the injustice, illegality, and inhumanity of the Scottish Inquisition, and of the innocency, zeal, ingenuity, and patience of the witnesses of Christ, as readily can be instanced in these latter ages. Only here is a taste till more to come, which, if the Lord bless for its designated end, the glory of God, the vindication of truth, the information and satisfaction of all serious sympathizers with Zion's sorrows, and the conviction or confutation of reproachers so far at least as to make them surcease from their invidious charge of things whereof the innocency is here vindicated, I have obtained all my design, and shall desire to give the Lord the praise.